The man you see on the mound is no ordinary pitcher. He's about to pitch three scoreless innings for the Kansas City Athletics at 59 years of age, and in doing so become the oldest man to ever compete in the major leagues. Let's talk about Satchel Paige, a man you couldn't take your eyes off of. Leroy Robert Page was born in Mobile, Alabama in 1906. As a child, he played bat and ball games using sticks and bottle caps. At the age of 12, he got into trouble and was sent to Alabama's Reform School for Juvenile Negro Lawbreakers at Mount Megis near Montgomery. That is where Page learned to play baseball. Following his release from the reformatory, Page went to work establishing himself in semi-pro leagues and then as an elite pitcher for the Birmingham Black Barons of the Negro National League. At Birmingham's Rickwood Field, Page dominated hitters with pinpoint accuracy and a peerless fastball. No one threw harder. Deception was another reason for Page's effectiveness. Slight, unpredictable movements designed to disrupt a hitter's timing were key to his success. In this regard, Louis Tion and Johnny Cueto remind us of Page's technique. He had a quick delivery and a slow delivery. He threw sidearm and submarine. What would he do next? Page would bend his knees and wind up with one, two, no wait, three windmills and then deliver a blazing fastball. Spectators arrived early to see Page warm up because he was known to awe crowds by hurling precise strikes over a matchbox or stick of gum. By the mid-1930s, Page's electrifying performances meant he could earn big money. On barnstorming tours with white stars such as Dizzy Dean, he routinely earned $1,000 for three innings of work, which is about $20,000 in our time after adjusting for inflation. Joe DiMaggio and Bob Feller said Page was the best they had ever seen, and Ted Williams asked Page to autograph his bat. Pitching Man, Page's memoir, is one of the best baseball books I've read. It includes many interesting and funny stories from his career, and it is written in his distinctive voice, and it is highly entertaining. Like many Negro League stars, Satchel played all over the United States and Caribbean. In fact, it was in Latin America that he experienced a major arm injury that forced him to rely less on speed. After 1939, Page developed an array of off-speed pitches, including a knuckleball, and famously the Ephus pitch, demonstrated here by Hugh Darvish. I wanted to show the Ephus pitch because it delights crowds and helps us to understand the appeal of Page. He threw incredibly hard and then deceptively slow. Men like Satchel Page demonstrated the tremendous talent of black professional ballplayers and paved the way for integration. In 1948, the Cleveland Indians signed the 42-year-old Page mid-season, and he went on to record six wins, one loss, two shutouts, and become the first African-American to pitch in the World Series. Like so many Negro League stars, we're left to wonder what kind of career numbers Page would have put up had he not faced racial barriers early in his life. That said, it's nice to know Page was alive to witness his induction into the Baseball Hall of Fame as its first African-American player. And in the annals of baseball history, he remains unique. The oldest man to pitch in the major leagues, author of a memoir of enduring appeal, and showman par excellence. Here you see 59-year-old Page doing publicity ahead of his final start in Major League Baseball. Does this look like a man capable of fooling big league hitters? In three innings of work, just one hitter, Hall of Fame outfielder Carl Yastrzemski, got a hit. Until the end of his life, Satchel Page was a man you could not take your eyes off of. If you like what you just saw, there are more shorts and lectures on this channel. And thanks for watching.